haven't done any fixed wing for a while, have we? And that's because every time it's a decent day coming up, I've always got a few quads to fly, and these are a little bit more hassle to carry around. Essentially, this is the follow-up review of the Sequoia or Secure ESC, which I think I took a look at about a year ago. You know, I get around to things eventually. It's a bit weird today. Normally I'd be throwing that direction. The wind is coming from over there, which is not ideal for throw, but uh, what are we going to do? I suppose I'll go out in the field a bit, throw it that way, hope for the best. Um, I spent yesterday relearning all the controls and the modes and how INAV works, so hopefully we'll get something. Uh, or we'll get a big crash, but you know, we'll see what happens. But before we get onto the flight, a quick word from our sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay can prototype and assemble PCBs for you. If you design your own PCBs, then you are probably well aware of them. Now, I don't know much about PCB design, but with open source hardware becoming more popular, they'll give out Gerber files, which is all you need to get your PCBs made. In fact, if you go to the shared project section on PCBWay.com, you'll be able to see lots of open source projects that you could get PCBWay to make for you. But it's not just PCBs, CNC machining, laser cutting, sheet metal bending, 3D printing and injection molding are just some of the extra things they can do, and in materials that are way out of reach for most hobbyists. So if you want to look at having them make something for you, check them out at PCBWay.com. Right now, we seem to have a problem that several times the wing has rebooted on me and we've got a problem with the servo, the um, left-hand wing servo, but it seems to be tied in with rebooting. I don't know if the, the Beck is not doing its job, but we'll have a fiddle around and see what I can do. If you're looking there, you can see there's an orange wire that's just floating about that should be plugged into that servo thing on the flight controller, so need to sort that out. Okay, we seem to be back in business. Servo is now fine, and let's see if it will launch this time and not crash into the gate. <sighs> it's fair to say we haven't had a very good track record in launching this, uh, but it was certainly okay last time. What we've done now, we it went straight into a gate, so we were lucky to get away with what we did. We have ripped up, well, we've broken the mounting for the antenna. We've got a slight knock, knock in the back of the wing there. But uh, yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. It's just turning over. And I totally can't remember how to uh, change auto launch. It doesn't help the fact that I have to throw it towards the gate, but I kind of thought it would clear it instead of just, it basically it just rolled over and went in backwards, um, which was not very nice. Everything in INAV checks out. It looked fine. Uh, it launched before, but uh, not this time, it would seem. Not this time at all. Well, it's take two, or probably take 15 about getting this in the air. I've repaired it. I think I've repaired the issues where the uh, servo wires were pulling out if it crashes and the wings come off. I'm gonna try and launch it without auto launch. I think I can cancel it and get a more gentle uh, pace. Also, I've got my own field today and the wind is coming that way, which means I don't have to throw it at a gate and risk uh, crashing it there. I think I've got more time to pull out or you know, potentially softer landing here. So let's give it another go. I've got no external footage to this because the GoPro ran out of battery, but what happens is I'm not on auto launch. I gently throttle up, um, I then throw it and then level it and then I pull all the way back and it wasn't coming up. Uh, that sort of told me maybe my battery's too forward. So I moved that back, launched it again and everything was fine. I say everything, one thing that I neglected to do was switch recording on on the DVR until I noticed it. But I'm, at this point I'm already two and a half minutes into a flight and I'm trying to auto tune and auto level the plane. One thing I picked up on quite early was we've got some sort of diagonal banding here, which is something I don't remember having before. We got quite a good picture, but you definitely really do notice that uh, diagonal banding. And it gets much worse when I increase the throttle. You would have seen there that the 
screen went a bit mental when I powered up fully to launch it. Here's me just winding up to do a full throttle pass and what you'll see is a lot more interference on the screen along with the OSD pretty much disappearing and flickering around. Got a fairly respectable 155 kilometers an hour but it was a little bit wind assisted though this made me think you know what I think there's some noise coming from this ESC and perhaps all that bulk in the previous ESC was all those nice capacitors sitting there trying to keep the voltage more regular and just to prove it did throw all right this is me launching with goggles on which is not the best I managed I managed to go flying behind myself but uh, could still recover it okay. But you can see again, we're getting a lot of flickering from the ESC, we're getting all that banding at about 50% throttle. Other than that, the wing flew very nicely, INAV performed very good, and I had one of the scariest um, sort of blackouts from video signal going on this flight I've ever had. As you can see here, we're out just about to 2K over the sea and the pitch is just not very good. So I turn around to come home and the picture goes, which is weird because I've just turned the plane towards myself so the antenna should have much better line of sight than it previously did, but nothing. And at this point I flick return to home. But you know that situation you kind of expect your picture to come back by this time and you're like, has it just gone into the sea or on the ground as it crashed? Am I just waiting for nothing? Telemetry had gone, I don't know what had happened, we flew out there all the way with no problems and it was a full 30 seconds before I finally got the image back and it was coming on home. But quite scary, but uh, kept calm, just waited it out and back it came. So coming into land, uh, absolute textbook, beautiful glide, coming down gently and flip it over and invert it. Brilliant. This is the only footage I've really got of my previous ESC. You can see at launch that we have some interference noise there. Problem is, is the MMCX cable that is attaching the antenna to the VTX had come out. So as I got to 100 meters, the thing went entirely. I guess it was maybe just resting against it, but yeah, we completely lost picture. But it seemed like we had no diagonal banding on that one at least. So I took a look at Secure's website and I did notice that if you look at some of the ESCs, they are shipping them with capacitors, not the ones with the built-in Beck. And I think this is the one I had. They also have a bit of a a bigger one which has a good couple of capacitors. So I did talk to them about this and said, hey, this has happened, show them the footage. And they said, yeah, try capacitor, see what happens. So I think we'll be trying that next time. But I'll leave this video here for now and I will come back and we'll see what happens. Hope that was useful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.